Good morning, and welcome to worship. It's great to see all of you. My week, my week looks much better this week than it did last week. Uh, first of all, we have our accompanist back. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> and Saturday, I was privileged to lead the charge with the open house for the Cloquet Public Library, uh, celebrating our wonderful new expansion. So it was a great day. Laura and Buzz showed up, dragged me away from, it dragged me away from a conversation I didn't want to be in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted the VIP tour and he gave it to us. And I got to tell you guys, what are the hours of the library? Uh, 9.30 to 7.30, Monday through Thursday, and 9.30 to 5.30, Friday. Not open on Saturday? 9.30 Saturdays. to 2 on Saturdays. It is a beautiful, what is it, a $2.8 million remodel. $2.8 million. And it is, is absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Libraries are usually old lighting with a lot of books. And this has open windows, spacious, got teen center, it's got everything. It is absolutely beautiful. And he was kind of one of the spearheads to the whole, he was actually spearheading the whole thing. <laughs> He hesitates to take credit, but they understand. It was it was seven years in the process, and a lot of time and effort <laughs> by a lot of people. But now my week looks wonderful. <laughs> 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 so I got all of the advertising up. I got now all I have to do is take the banners down. <laughs> so <laughs> again, welcome to worship. Um, just one announcement. Today, um, we've got a First Communion class on Saturday from 10.30 to 2. Uh, I believe we have three students, and uh, Charlie was sick this past week, um, but he got tested for COVID, and uh, Becca says he's doing fine, he's just got a cold. <laughs> so we'll uh, see him on Saturday. Other announcements? Glad you're feeling better, Becca. I mean, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs>
of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us together pray the prayer of the day. God of radical love, you prevented Abraham from sacrificing his son for you. You showed him that you don't need sacrifice to love or be loved. Remind us that you love us and we please you. Amen. Please be seated.
Before we get to our story today, a little bit of review is in order. Back in chapter 12 of Genesis, we hear God speaking a word of command and a word of promise to this man, Abram. Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. This command was the first test of Abraham and his wife. Abraham passed the test and followed God's command. It was a huge leap of faith, to be sure. Abraham goes even though God hasn't, shown him or told him what the destination will be. The promise was also difficult to believe. Abram and Sarah weren't youngsters. Worse yet, the promise of children wasn't quickly realized. I think most of us would laugh if someone told us we would become first-time parents when we were already in our 90s. But after nearly 25 years of waiting, Sarah did produce a son. Now that was a sketchy backdrop for our story today. Abram and Sarah have only one son, Isaac. God's promise is that through Isaac, Abraham will become a great nation with descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. For me, that promise is what makes the command to sacrifice Isaac so strange. Had I been Abram, I would have been asking some questions. Those questions would have begun with, you want me to do what? The temptation in dealing with the story is to rush to the end of the story. But doing so would be cheating ourselves out of some of the really good stuff. We would miss the fact that Abram obeyed God without knowing why. We would miss the preparations Abram made. We would miss the fact that the sacrifice to, would, was to be made far from home, at least a two-day journey from home. We would miss Abraham's amazing statement of faith in this God of we will worship, and we will come back to you, Abraham said to his young men. When Isaac asks where the land is for the sacrifice, Abraham answers with another amazing statement of faith. God himself will provide the land for the burnt offering, my son. Now at that point, you and I would surely be asking questions rather than simply obeying the command. I would certainly be asking God how the promises could possibly be fulfilled if Isaac were dead. As I wrestled with the text this week, I received an email from a friend with a story I had seen several times before. The story goes like this. There was once an old man who was trapped on a rooftop during a flood conditions. A helicopter flew over and a crew member dropped a ladder and yelled, Grab the ladder! Thanks, but no thanks, the old man replied. My God will rescue me. God will provide. Floodwaters kept rising. Before long, a team of rescue workers showed up in a bright yellow boat. As the boat reached the peak of the roofline, the workers called to the old man, Hop in! will take you to safety. And once again, the man replied, thanks, but no thanks. My God will rescue me. God will provide. A little while later, a power boat cruised up to the rooftop. A police officer yelled to the old man, get in or else you are going to drown. The man gave the same reply to the police officer. Just as the water was reaching the very top of the roof, a dog that looked like Lassie swung by with a life jacket. 
Once again, the man insisted that God would rescue him. Just then, the levee broke, and a wall of water swept the man off the roof, and he drowned. When he got to heaven, he asked the Lord, why didn't you provide for me? <laughs> I, I had such great faith. The Lord replied, I sent you a helicopter, a rowboat, a powerboat, and last but not least, I sent you Lassie. I did provide for you. I think that just like this old man, we tend to not recognize all of the things that God provides for us. We're too blind to see how God provides for us in our everyday lives. God certainly does take care of us, but we don't give God credit for the things we are provided. Despite the anguish that Abraham must have felt as he prepared for the sacrifice and then traveled to Mount Moriah, Abraham maintained his faith and his trust in God and in the promise he had been given. I don't think the location of this altar Abraham built was a random choice either. It would later become the location of Solomon's temple and be the official place of sacrifice for God's people. Even later, it would be the site of a mock trial. And another time, God provided the land for the sacrifice. Here is the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. The sad truth is that our world today is often just as blind to God's provision as the old man on the roof was. The Lord will provide. Yet we fail to see. The Lord will provide. But we'd rather do it ourselves. The Lord will provide. However, we find it difficult to accept the gift. The good news for us today is that even when we fail to see and acknowledge God's amazing gift of grace, God doesn't stop providing grace. The Lamb who takes away the sin of the world isn't finished giving. Even when we forget to ask, the gift is ours. The great news for us today is that even though this life will never be without trials, crosses, God will never fail us in our need. All we need do is trust God's promises. The promises are real. They're real for us, just as they were for Abraham and Sarah and Isaac. Our God is the God of love, and the God of promise, and the God of amazing provision. God continues to speak to us today. God continues to provide, even to the point of following through with the ultimate sacrifice. Abraham was spared the grief of losing the son he loved. Our God didn't withhold the only son of God. Jesus became the sacrificial lamb. Because of God's sacrifice, we do not have to live in fear. Even death can snatch us away from God's love. to our next hymn. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. It's number 818 in your red book.
Together with the whole church, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended in heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Our petitions. God, please respond, hear our prayer. We confess that we rarely have any idea what true sacrifice looks like. Give us, we give our, of, of our surplus when it's convenient, and hope that it is enough. Teach us to give with wide open hearts that risk, rather than protective stinginess cloaked in a flimsy assurance of security. Faithful God. Yes. Loving Creator, you do not ask that we slaughter animals to appease you, but rather that we responsibly steward all the riches and resources of your creation. Forgive our missteps and help us help show us how we can be part of healing this beautiful but wounded planet. Faithful God. Lord, there are many in this world who suffer from the threat of abuse and maltreatment by those more powerful than themselves. Shepherd them with your love, lead them to rescue, and use all of us to bring about a society where such crime is neither persistent nor tolerated. Faithful God. Lord, your presence is balm to those who suffer illness or long for wholeness. Feed them on your promises and surround them with your healing. We pray especially for Herb and Greta, Betty, Elvin and Elby, Debbie, Leland and Nicole, Jim, Gerald, Frank, Barry, Mark, Marty, Jim, Russell, Susan, Mona, Arlene, Greg, Richard, Chris, Jennifer, Amanda, Candy, Philip, and their families, and those we now name either silently or aloud. Faithful God. For all your faithful children who have gone forward to pave the way so that we might worship without fear or persecution, we give you thanks. Shine their light ever before us as we strive to continually follow you. Faithful God. Yes. Your word is life and your promises are real, O oh God. Sustain us and use us as the living answers to our own prayers, strengthen, strengthening us by your spirit and drawing us close to your Son, Jesus Christ. Peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus teaches. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
peace, share the good news.